Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are here with Austin from Ohio, and today is Saturday, June 12th, 2021. I'm kind of disappointed that I can't do the live stream tonight, and I had to postpone it, and I don't know what's going on with the internet, but it's running really slow, and I'm taking a risk trying to make this video right now because it's just, it's acting really weird. The other day it was out for a while, and then other people told me that their internet was out. Tim said his was acting up. Um, other people told me theirs was acting up too all over the country. So I'm not even sure if this is going to work out. But I'm going I'm hoping that it will. I did put the video that got taken down the other day on Odyssey. I will provide a link in this video below once it's done uploading, of course. Whatever time that may be. It's the weekend. I don't plan on going to bed early. So I'll be able to see it upload and whatnot. And anyone that's ever uploaded a YouTube video, for some reason, in this age of high-speed internet, even I... Well, let me say this. When I upload videos, I upload them on my mobile data. Because for some reason, my Wi-Fi, even when it's working really well, still takes forever to upload a video. Even on... The mobile data it takes literally probably about hour 45 minutes two hours almost for the videos that i do but that's beside the point all right let's uh let's get started this first one comes to us from associated press rash of mass shootings stirs u.s fears heading into summer actually no time out sorry i forgot something Tim made a video yesterday, which I thought was handled very, very well. And I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. I don't want to say the guy's name, but he's been making videos and he's been... This guy has a problem with name dropping people and all this stuff. And if you are watching, which I know you do, the reason that I had an initial problem with you is because... You said something a while back about somebody who is very, very respected in the community. Somebody who's literally been around for years. Somebody that you supposedly look up to. And what you said could have got that person really, really hurt or even worse. So initially, that's why I had a problem with, with what you were saying. But I could have overlooked that. Then you started coming out and saying things about me, saying things about Tim, and you accused me of not watching the video, which I did. I just didn't find anything of any value in it, really, because it was basically just a bunch of rambling and whatnot, but that's beside the point. But now, after all this, and what you were saying about me, what you were saying about Tim... I just can't, I don't, I don't know, I just, I just don't have a good feeling about it at all. Of course, I could be wrong. I mean, I tried not to address it, of course. And Tim tried not to address it either, but then it got to the point where we're like, okay, we have to say something. And I'm going to go ahead and make you the same deal Tim did. If you can admit that what you said were lies about myself and about Tim... Or something that would justify why you said that. Or even explain why you've been saying things like that. We could start all over again. We could forget about all that. Put it behind us because there's enough going on in the world right now. And we don't need this. Especially amongst the community. We don't need this. There's enough division going on. There's enough problems that we all face individually, collectively, as a whole, and it's just, it's not needed, it's not needed, so that that's all I really pretty much have to say about that, because everything that I could have said, Tim said last night, which I thought was handled gracefully, gracefully, I thought he was going to be a lot more mad, and he did get mad, but he wasn't as mad as I thought he was going to be. 
But like I said, man, we can we can put all that behind us. It, it doesn't have to be this way. I'm willing to overlook all of that. And I won't say your name because I don't I don't have to do that. But yeah, I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just going to leave it there. All right, Associated Press. Rash of mass shootings stirs U.S. fears heading into summer. This article was posted today. Two people were killed and at least 30 others wounded in mass shootings overnight in three states, authorities said. Saturday, stoking concerns that a spike in U.S. gun violence could continue into the summer as situation restrictions ease and more people are freed to socialize. The attacks took place late Friday or early Saturday in the Texas capital of Austin, Chicago, and Savannah, Georgia. In Austin, authorities said they arrested one or two male suspects and were searching for the other after a shooting early Saturday on a crowded pedestrian-only street packed with bars and restaurants. 14 people were wounded, including two critically, in the gunfire, which the city's interim police chief said is believed to have started as a dispute between two parties. No arrests were reported by late Saturday in the two other shootings. In Chicago, a woman was killed, nine other people wounded, when two men opened fire on a group standing in a sidewalk, on a sidewalk, in the Chatham neighborhood on the city's south side. Shooters also got away and hadn't been identified by mid-afternoon Sunday. In the South Georgia city of Savannah, police said one man was killed. Seven other people were wounded in a mass shooting. Friday evening, police said two of the wounded are children, 18-month-old, and 13 bloodlines. Oh, oh I mean, 13-year-old. Uh, Savannah Police Chief Roy Minter Jr. said the shooting may be linked to an ongoing dispute between two groups, citing reports of gunshots being fired at the same apartment complex earlier this week. So basically, they're just going to keep going with this. I mean, we all seen it coming. We know the, the bills that they have put forth. And there's a lot of speculation going around that they don't need to ban guns, which they probably don't. But it helps. It most definitely helps. I haven't watched the uh, Friends of David Goldberg series yet. I'm going to do that because I'm really, really interested in what they have to say. And then I'll probably make a video on that. But, yeah. Quote, It's very disturbing what we're seeing across the country and the level of gun violence that we're seeing across the country. He told reporters Saturday, It's disturbing and it's senseless. The attacks come amid an easing of situation restrictions in much of the country, including Chicago, which lifted many of its remaining safeguards on Friday. Okay, so, now they're blaming... Like, oh, people are going back outside, and this this is why this is happening, and people can't be trusted with freedom, that type of thing. That's how they're going to fully justify the real crackdown, which I don't know if you've noticed yet is most definitely on the horizon. This lifting of restrictions here and there and all that is literally, literally just so they can come back and say, that that we gave people too much freedom and now more people than ever are dying from the situation and the new situation that they've been talking about the delta situation that's apparently going to be the uh the new main event they keep talking about that they keep saying it's going to overtake the united states they keep saying all this stuff and what's that it's incredibly multifaceted because it always is. It has to be incredibly multifaceted. So many people also are very, very confused. So many people are deceived. People are deceived and they don't even know that they are deceived. They don't even know that they don't know that they are deceived, if that makes any sense. Okay, let's see where we at. Many hope that a spike in U.S. shootings and homicides last year was an aberration perhaps caused by situation-related stress amid a rise in gun ownership and debate over policing. 
Those rates are still higher than they were in pre-situation times. You see how they're doing that? You see how they're using the, uh, just like in the book, Great Reset. They have a BC and an AC now. Before and after. Those rates are still higher than they were in pre-situation times, including cities that refused to slash police spending following the death of George Floyd and those that made modest cuts. And yeah, on the back burner right now, they're keeping all of the division stuff. They're, they're still talking about it. They're still having their little, you know, conferences and they're still talking about it on the news, but it's kind of on the back burner along with... Uh, Oh, what was it? I forget now. I'll, it'll come back to me. But it's it's like an underlying thing now. It's like uh, it, it's there and they're using it and it is still causing division because of the things that we're seeing. But it's not at the forefront. And when it does come back to the forefront, there's going to be so much chaos. So much chaos. And then the division also is fueled by, well... People are saying like, oh, Trump's going to be reinstated in August and we're, we're going to go back to having a real president and this and that. And no, that's not going to happen. And if something like that would happen, it would literally only be to create chaos. That's it. Order out of chaos is the name of the game. And if anybody's ever studied Freemasonry, they would understand that. Okay, I'm going to skip this paragraph, this police uh, executive director. He's just basically saying there there was a hope it might simply be a statistical blip that would start to come down. And then we're entering a new period where we'll see a reversal of 20-year declines in these crimes. Tracking ups and downs in crime is always complicated, but violent crime is com commonly increases in the summer months. Weekend evenings and early morning hours are also common windows for shootings. Many types of crime did decline in 2020 and have stayed lower this year, suggesting the situation, the activism, and unrest spurred by the reaction to George Floyd's death didn't lead to an overall spike in crime. The two met its killings in 2020 were the lowest annual total in a decade. Time out. Didn't I just read an article like two videos ago where they said that 2020 would set a record for the number of shootings and people dying? I know I just read that. I'm going to have to go back and look now. But then they say that, oh, it, it declined in 2020 in uh, the lowest annual total in a decade. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Associated Press, USA Today, Northeastern University. Database tracks mass killings, including shootings. Defined as four or more people dead, not including the perpetrator. According to that definition, there have been 17 mass killings. 16 of those shootings already this year, said James Allen Fox, a criminologist and professor at Northeastern University. The Gun Violence Archive, which monitors media and police reports to track gun violence, defines mass shootings as those involving four or more people who were shot, regardless of whether they died. Overall, according to its database, more than 8,700 people have died of gun violence in the U.S. this year. Uh, they just basically keep just talking about the made-up statistics. Oh, and check this out. At the bottom here, this story has been con corrected in the 13th paragraph. That two mass killings in 2020 marked the lowest annual total in a decade, according to the database tracker. A lot of 13s. A lot of 13s. But up here, the... Uh, it's worrisome, Fox said. We have a blend of people beginning to get out and in public. We have lots of divisiveness and we have more guns and warm weather. It's a potentially deadly mix. And this summer, yes, we are going to see a rise in those because, well, that's the agenda. The agenda is to disarm everybody in the entire world. It's been on the docket for a long time. Long, long, long time. Crazy. Let's move on. I found this one very, very interesting. And this is from uh, Ars Technica. Hackers can mess with HTTPS connections by sending data 
to your email server. Well, that's that's weird. <laughs> when you visit an HTTPS protected website, your browser doesn't exchange data with the web server until it has ensured that the site's digital certificate is valid. That prevents hackers with the ability to monitor and modify data passing between you and the site from obtaining authentication cookies or executing malicious code on the visiting device. But what could what would happen if a man in the middle attacker could confuse the browser into accidentally connecting to an email server or FTP server that uses a certificate that's compatible with the one used by the website? Well, I guess we're going to find out, right? The perils of speaking HTTPS to an email server. Because the domain name of the website matches the domain name on the email or FTP server certificate, the browser will, in many cases, establish a transport layer security connection with one of these servers rather than the website the user intended to visit. Because the browser is communicating in HTTPS and the email or FTP server is using SMTP, FTPS, or another protocol, the possibility exists that things might go horribly wrong. A decrypted authentication cookie could be sent to the attacker, for instance, or an attacker could execute malicious code on the visiting machine. The scenario isn't as far-fetched as some people might think. New research, in fact, found that roughly 1.4 million web servers use a domain name that's compatible with the cryptographic Credential of either an email or FTP server belonging to the same organization. Of those sites, about 114,000 are considered exploitable because the email or FTP server uses software that's known to be vulnerable to such attacks. Let me stop right here for a minute. The reason that they are putting all of this out there, and it's not this website's fault or nothing like that, it's just the one that I pulled up, but there's a bunch more. They use all this language in here about like FTP and SMTP and FTPS and HTTPS because the common person doesn't know very much about domains, servers, uh, browsers, anything like that because it's very complicated. I tried to get into it for a while back when I was uh, messing with computers and stuff years ago, but it, it, it is a very complicated thing. They're going to blame these you know, faceless hackers, you know, the ones that hack the uh, the pipeline and the ones that hack Fastly and, you know, all of that. Still no arrests have been made. They kind of just forget talking about it. They're just like, yeah, hackers did it. Kind of reminds me of uh, Expert Said, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But when these things start to happen on an individual level or a group level, they can, well, blame the hackers because most people don't know about these things. Education is the key in most cases. Education is the key to understanding, of course. Everybody knows that. I'm not talking about, you know, like public education. No, I'm talking about actual learning on your own. You have to seek it out. Many people don't seek out learning. All of you people do because you guys are awesome and we're all in this community and, you know, we do what we do. And we've been blessed to see through all this stuff and we're, I don't know about you guys, but I am ever learning. That's how I would explain it. I want to learn about every little thing that I come across. Everything. I don't care what it is. I want to learn how, like yesterday, I was looking up because I seen a mole. It was like, it like walked up to me at work and... I was looking around and I was watching him and he was going, doing whatever, looking for a place to dig. And I wanted to know why moles duck. Like, what what do they do that for? To eat, to do all this, which I learned about that. Something new that I know. It has no relevance to what I'm talking about here, of course, but it's just, that that's what I mean. I am ever learning. I want to learn about every little thing. One time I looked up how cigarettes are made. Learned all about reconstituted tobacco sheet and all that crap. But, yeah, we'll get back to this before the rambling man takes off, right? That's still my thing and nobody can have it. Nobody can have it. Because it's mine. 
Okay, let's see. Such attacks are possible because of the failure of TLS to protect the integrity of the TCP connection itself, rather than the integrity of just the server speaking to HTTP, SMTP, or another internet language. Man-in-the-middle attackers can exploit this weakness to redirect TLS traffic from the intended server and protocol to another, substitute and point in protocol. Quote, the basic principle is that an attacker can redirect traffic intended for one service to another. Because TLS does not protect the IP address or port number, Marcus Brinkman, researcher at Ruhr, Ruhr University, Bochum in Germany, told me, quote, In the past, people have considered attacks where the MITM attacker redirects a browser to a different web server, but we are considering the case where the attacker redirects the browser from the web server to a different application server such as FTP or email. Then they give you this diagram and they just start talking about this stuff here. But the reason I brought this up is because there's a lot going on in the cyber world. A lot going on. And if anybody has anything that they want to send me regarding this or regarding uh, what I'm going to be talking about in this video, please, please, please email me. My email is all lowercase. My email is Austin J Star 0127 at gmail.com. Please, please email me and send me what you have. I will look into it and I will, if I don't forget, I'll put it in my video and I will give you the credit for it, of course. Of course. Okay, cracks in the cornerstone. Typically abbreviated as TLS, Transport Layer Security, uses strong encryption to prove that an end user is connected to an authentic server belonging to a specific service such as Google or Bank of America, and not an imposter masquerading as that service. TLS also encrypts data as it travels between an end user and a server to ensure that people who can monitor the connection can't read or tamper with the contents. With millions of servers relying on it, TLS is a cornerstone of online security. In a research paper published on Wednesday, Brinkman and seven other researchers investigated the feasibility of using what they call cross-protocol attacks to bypass TLS protections. The technique involves MITM attacker redirecting cross-origin HTTP requests to servers that communicate over SMTP, IMAP, POP3, or FTP, or other communication protocol. So basically, they're just kind of painting the picture of well <laughs> exactly what it says because they're going to come out and they're going to start saying oh hackers hackers did it oh who are the hackers uh we don't know hackers did it oh well can i see like the how they did it nope hackers did it experts said go back in your house put your mask on Get your shot and shut up while we build our world government and take over the world. And then we can all be happy and own nothing except us. We'll own everything. You will own nothing. And you'll be happy about it or we'll take you out. Okay, and they just keep going on about the attack. Okay, here we go. Upload attack. For this attack, we assume the attacker has some ability to upload data to S-sub S and retrieve it later. In an upload attack, the attacker tries to store parts of the HTTP request to the browser, specifically the cookie header on S-sub. This might, for example, occur if the server interprets the request as a file upload or if the server is logging incoming requests verbosely. On a successful attack, the attacker can then retrieve the content on the server independently of the connection from C to S sub and retrieve the HTTPS session cookie. Download attack stored XSS. For this attack, we assume the attacker has some ability to prepare stored data on S sub and download it. In a downloading attack, the attacker exploits benign protocol features that download previously stored and specific crafted data from S sub to C. This is similar to a stored XSS vulnerability, however, because protocol different from HT, 
FTP is used even sophisticated defense mechanisms against XSS, like the content security policy, can be circumvented. Very likely, SSF will not send any CSP by itself, and large parts of the response are under the control of the attacker. Basically, what they're saying in here is that these hackers can hack through anything, no matter what server you're using, no matter what malware or antivirus you're using, no matter what uh, domain, anything like that. And basically, they can put stuff on your computer, which we've, we've known that they can do that, but they can put stuff on your computer that you never looked up. Think of the setups that they can do. Blame it on, well, they could blame it on you if they wanted to come and target you, but anything, blame it on a hacker. And I'm sure the first thing your mind went to when I said that is... Well, something that I won't say because it's like the most disgusting thing in the entire world. But imagine that. You're sleeping soundly in bed. And all of a sudden you're getting arrested for this certain thing. And the evidence is, well, it's on your computer or your phone and you never looked it up. Terrifying. Like the deep fakes. That terrifies me too. They can literally make a video that looks real. And they could, like, show you shooting somebody in the head, even though you've never done that. Ever. And they can use it against you if they wanted to, and people would believe it because, well, it's really hard now to distinguish reality from non-reality. Then you got this reflection attack, and where the attacker tries to trick the server into reflecting parts of the C request and its response to C. If successful, the attacker sends malicious JavaScript within the request that gets reflected by S-Sub. The client will then praise the answer from the server, which will turn, which in turn can lead to the execution of JavaScript in the context of a targeted web server. And it just basically keeps going on about that. To prevent cross-protocol attacks, the researchers propose stricter enforcement of two existing protections. First is known as application layer protocol negotiation. The TLS extension that allows an application layer such as a browser to negotiate what protocol should be used in secure connection. ALPN, as it's usually abbreviated, is used to establish connections using better performing HTTP2 protocol without additional round trips. And they just, by strictly enforcing this and that. Okay, here's my question. How come everything that seems to happen, the only answer that we ever get to these solutions is... More enforcement, more enforcement, more government control. When has government ever been good at fixing anything? They're not there for that. They're literally not there for that. But this will also justify uh, updated internet regulations. <laughs> that the Facebook commercials, they have like 10 of them now I've seen, where they support updating internet regulations and if facebook is getting behind that you know that it's not good kind of like when net neutrality in 2015 was going on and everybody thought it was a great idea because they lied and they said that we can give unlimited access to the internet to every single person in the world under net neutrality and we can you know google can buy all this stuff and it'll be perfect and literally all it was was when it comes down to it all it was, was the government taking control of the internet. Which we are now seeing the result of that because, well, I just had a video taken down the other day. Back then, it was pretty much unheard of if you got a video taken down. They really didn't start doing that until more recently. Especially, especially within the last year and a half. Moving on. Okay, here we are at NBC News. And this is basically exactly what we've been saying the whole time. And now they're saying it. A lot, actually. Drought is here to stay in the western U.S. How will states adapt? Yeah, they're taking the water away. Yeah, look, U.S. pushing Lake Mead to first time water shortage. Well, the maker drought in western U.S. is pushing the Lake Mead to first-time water shortage. 
There's water shortages. There's food shortages. There's a shortage on pretty much everything. The coin shortage is still going on, believe it or not. You know what else there's a shortage of? Information. You know what else there's a shortage of? Faith. But we'll, we'll get into that another time. Drought is not a temporary condition we can expect to go away, but rather something we have to deal with, one expert said. I would like to see this expert. Trees are dying. Riverbeds are empty. Lake Mead's water level dropped to its lowest point in history. And Utah's governor asked residents to pray for rain. Water is increasingly scarce in the western U.S., where 72% of the region is in severe drought. 26% is an exceptional drought, and populations are booming. Oh, yeah, look at that. Populations are booming, and and we got 72% of the region in severe drought, and 26% is an exceptional, exceptional drought. Oh, we're going to have to, well, take you off the land, lower the population so we can restore all this stuff. And there's trees dying. The riverbeds are empty. We got a fast track agenda 2030 now, right? That's what I read when I read stuff like this. And they want to talk about pray for rain. Yeah, you could do that or you could stop geoengineering. There's a good one. Stop spraying. They're spraying right now, right above my house. How you doing, traitor? Uh, whatever, he don't care about me. Insufficient monsoon rains last summer and low snowpacks over the winter left states like Arizona, Utah, and Nevada without the typical amount of water they need. And forecasts for the rainy summer season don't show promise. Forecasts for the rainy summer season? How the, how in the world are they going to forecast weather that far in advance and then claim that they don't have inside knowledge of what it's going to do? That far out. This year's aridity is happening against the backdrop of a 20-year-long drought. The past two decades have been the driest, the second, or the second driest in the last 1,200 years in the West. Posing existential questions about how to secure a livable future in the region. It's time to ask, quote, is this a drought or is it just the way, uh, the, way the hydrology of the Colorado River is going to be? Said John Ensminger, the general manager of Southern Nevada Water Authority. Greater Las Vegas is one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in the country, home to more than 2.2 million people, and it gets just over four inches of rain in a good year. Yeah, we got to get you off that land, away from all that, pack you into these cities. Around 90% of the water comes from Lake Mead, the reservoir on the Colorado River formed by the Hoover Dam, which is currently 36% full. The drought has been so persistent that the Southern Nevada Water Authority and many other groups in the region have spent the last 20 years preparing for a drier future. Quote, it isn't sneaking up on us, Ensminger said. Since 2002, our population has increased close to 50%. About 750,000 people in the last 19 years or so, and over that same time, our aggregated depletions from the Colorado River have gone down 23%. The good news, he said, is that per capita, water consumption is down by 40%. Indoor water is recycled in southern Nevada, where residents are paid to replace grass with drip-irrigated landscaping. This is one of the region's many ways of confronting a 21st century Colorado River with significantly less water than it had a century ago. I wonder why it has significantly less water. There is a guy parachuting. I've never seen this. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Uh, there was a guy parachuting. Never seen anything like it before in my life. And apparently he has a motorized parachute to where it like shoots him way up in the air. And he started on the, wait, on the west side, did a couple turns, came over the house and I sat here and watched him from the car and I'm like, there's a guy parachuting. That's when I paused the video. My neighbors are outside and uh, 
They said he's been doing that for a while and he just keeps making turns and stuff and then he goes and he lands in the river and then he gets back up on the bank and does it again. I've never seen anything like that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. Anyway, back to this. Entsminger said the region needs to drastically increase our conservation and rethink how we're using almost every gallon of water in order to accommodate that kind of future development. That includes a new law. Here we go again with the new laws. The new... Oh, man. That will declare more than 30% of the grass illegal in southern Nevada. 30% of the grass illegal. This law is right out of Agenda 21. Straight out of it. The future of the Colorado River in the 21st century is almost certainly significantly less water than we had in the 20th century, he said, and it will require collaboration between the U.S. and Mexico. The challenge before us is how seven states and two countries can all cooperate to figure out how to get in the coming decades with significantly less get by in the coming decades with significantly less water than we thought we had. Uh, well, there you go. Oh, we need to collaborate with Mexico in the United States, we, we it's almost like we need some sort of world authority that can regulate all this stuff. And I can't, and we got to declare the grass illegal. I don't know how you can do that. I really don't know how you can do that. This is where we see the North American Union coming into view. This is where we see the new world starting to take shape around us. Bullseye of global warming. Oh, here we go. Grass bands won't save the West, especially a place that's in the middle of the desert and surging in population like Phoenix. Almost as if they're trying to, uh, well, they're trying to justify a reduction in population. Phoenix is the bullseye of global warming. Heating up and drying out, said Andrew Ross, a professor of social and cultural analysis at New York University and author of a book about Arizona's largest city called Bird on Fire. Lessons from the world's least sustainable city. Oh, here we go. This is literally just Agenda 21. Man, and people still don't see this stuff. They still have no idea that any of this is even... Oh, it makes me so mad. Before it was Phoenix, the Ho'okam indigenous people lived on the land for centuries. They had a wonderful irrigation network system, and they sub... Oh, I can't believe they're already... They're bringing up the... Indi okay, hold on. Let me try again. Before it was Phoenix, the Ho'okam pe indigenous people lived on the land for centuries. They had a wonderful irrigation network system, and they subsisted in the desert with their canal network for more than a thousand years, Ross said, but severe drought forced them to abandon the site. Phoenix is built atop the ruins of a Hokum people city, and the canal system brings water to Phoenix, was built on the path first used by the Hokum. The allegory is built into the city, Ross said. The test is whether history repeats itself. There's a picture of an empty irrigation canal at a tree farm in Corrales, New Mexico. This is all engineered. This is engineered, of course. It's called geoengineering. All of this is by design. All of this is by design. Phoenix is a growth-obsessed city dominated by single-family home real estate development. Here we go again. Remember I brought that up where they're trying to end single family housing on par with Agenda 21 you're not going to be allowed to live in your own house oh no oh no oh no blame us right you can't look at the long term future of those developments without concluding that the challenges will only get greater by the year with every new subdivision of low density tract housing that's built Oh, if this if this video stops and this messes up my recording, which it's possible, I will make a part two. Just want to tell you guys that before 
it cuts me out because if it keeps lagging like this, it will cut me out. When he was writing in his book, Phoenix, 10 years ago, someone described Phoenix to Ross as a city of people who are building homes for the people who are building homes. The metro area's population is almost 5 million, expected to grow by around 2 million in the next 30 years. Oh, not if they have something to say about it. It's not what Deagle.com says. Utah is in a similar situation. Its population grew by 18.4% over the past decade, making it the country's fastest growing state, according to the latest census data. State government recently allocated $280 million for water projects, $100 million of which is for conservation. Farmers who consume the most water in the state are no longer flooding fields to irrigate them. Instead, they're using more targeted and less wasteful irrigation methods. Utah is so dry the state officials might totally ban fireworks, fearing wildfires. Oh, yes. I've already asked all Utahns to conserve water by avoiding long showers, fixing leaky faucets, and planting water-wise landscapes. But I fear those efforts alone will be enough to protect us, Governor Spencer Cox recently said in a statement. To adapt, cities must acknowledge that the drought is not a temporary condition we can expect to go away, but rather something we have to deal with, said John Berggren, water policy advisor for Western Resource Advocates based in Boulder, Colorado. What does a sustainable, there's that word again, there's that word again, Colorado River system look like? We have a long way to go to answer that question, Berggren said. Panic time. Oh yeah, panic time, right? While it's easy to imagine that the drought spells apocalypse, experts say, again, what experts? What prolonged drought really requires is the appropriate response and a willingness to adapt. A report this spring from Arizona State University's Kyle Center for Water Policy argues that the perception that Arizona is worst off among the western states is wrong. Irrigated agriculture consumes 74% of the state's water supply, but as populations boom, more farmland is becoming neighborhoods, driving down water use. Farming in the Sun Corridor faces a genuine crisis, but that does not necessarily translate into urban shortages, the report said. Of course, the fact that the Sun Corridor's dominant city is named after a bird that periodically immolates itself clearly invites scrutiny. It's not that Phoenix won't have water in 20 years, but rather that, in, that to ensure that it does, industry might need to rethink why Arizona, which is mostly desert, is one of the top three market vegetable producing states. Bergen said that it's time to start strategizing, suggesting that states might need to pay farmers to plow their land without seeding it temporarily to destroy weeds and conserve moisture in the soil. If push comes to shove, they might need to go out and buy water rights from farmers, and those farms might go out of business, he said. That's not an idea to take lightly and also not one to disregard. We can have thriving communities, growing communities, diverse communities in the West. We just have to do it in a different way. Basically what this last paragraph is saying is that, oh, we might need to go out and buy water rights from farmers and those farms might go out of business. That's the point. On, in the new world order, nobody will own land. You will own nothing. They will own all the land. They will tell you where you can live what tiny little bit of square footage you can live on this article spells out agenda 21 this is straight out of agenda 21 problem reaction solution what do they do create the problem boom drought but from geoengineering reaction well here's one right here NBC article solution Adopt Agenda 21, adopt Agenda 2030, buy up all the farmland. Bill Gates is doing a good job of that, and so is China. And, well, call it a day. Jeez. Let's move on. Think about how many more people in the United States will go out and take the cure if they can't have their phone. No jab, no phone. 
on Veed to have SIM cards blocked, Pakistan's Punjab government says. They, they do this kind of stuff. They put the idea out there so people start talking about it. A lot of people are going to say this is a good idea. We got to be safe. I can see it now. The arguments on social media and in general. We need to be safe. You shouldn't be allowed to have access to your phone until you get this thing. Think of it as strong persuasion. We have to be safe and you need to do your part. And Oh, it, this is terrible. This has gone too far. This is literally madness. Madness. Punjab's provincial government is turning to coercive measures to increase participation in its, you can read that, program after unveiling plans to disable the SIM cards of people who decline. The extreme decision was made during a meeting of high-ranking civil and military officials chaired by Punjab Health Minister Yasmin Rashid. Rashid said the policy would disable SIM cards belonging to those who failed to get VED beyond a certain time. We're doing all we can to compel people to get cured. The government cannot allow individuals who do not want to get cured to risk lives of those who are already cured. Okay, wait. If your cure works, why are you worried about the uncured? I better be really careful. The health minister told Pakistan's Express Tribune, she said that provincial government would devise a timeline for the policy's implementation once it received formal approval from the National Command and Operations Center, which coordinates Pakistan's national response to the situation. Punjab's primary and secondary health department announced the measure on Thursday in a tweet detailing the outcome of the meeting. Mobile sims of people not getting cured may be blocked. Officials later signed the plan was moving forward. And of course, they're they're doing this. And they're probably going to bring something like this to, well, I can see this happening in New York, California. Eventually, it will be the entire United States. People still are under the impression that if it happens in another country, we don't have to worry about that because we're America. And this entire time, this whole year and a half, should tell you that that is a load of crap. We no longer live in the United States of America. We live in the divided conglomerate of the New World Order. <laughs> we literally are living in the beginning stages of the New World Order. <sighs> They're going to keep doing stuff like this. I want to get to something else, so I'm not going to go through all of this. But they're going to keep doing stuff like this. They're going to take your phone. They're going to take anything that you have. Cut your internet access. It's going to happen. And people will. Will. This is, well, this is part of phase two. People will flock to get this. Phase one was voluntary. Phase two are incentives and all that. Phase three is the fun one. <laughs> The one where they just get tired of all of us and they go and force this militarily on the rest of us with the approval of 90 or so percent of the population. Not realizing, the 90 percent population, not realizing that what they are doing is ensuring their own demise. Um, even so, come Lord Jesus. That's what I say. Even so. Come, Lord Yeshua. Jesus the Messiah. This is crazy. This is literally insane. This is literally insane. I'm not just saying like, whoa, man, this is insane. No, like, no, this is actually insane. I can see something like this taking shape in the United States. Absolutely, I can see it. 100%. Next will be your internet's getting cut. Pfft, I don't care. I'll go back to living before 1996 or whatever. Don't matter to me. I don't care if there's no internet or no phone or nothing. I've already said before. Papers. Get your papers. I'll be on bicycle or a horseback. Knocking on people's doors. Throwing the newspapers that I wrote up or whatever. I don't care about any of this. 
internet and phones are tools, means to an end, and my end is to try to help wake the American people before we are all totally destroyed. Granted, I'm only reaching a couple hundred to a thousand people at a time, but it's enough. It, it's really enough. Because then those people can reach a couple hundred. Imagine that. Imagine if you all started making videos. So I'm getting to a couple hundred to a thousand of you. You start making videos. And you guys start, each one of you individually reaches a couple hundreds to a thousand. Then those people individually you, you can see, you follow, follow the uh, line of thought. Pretty soon the entire country knows what's going on. And no amount of disinformation or anything would be able to change that. So, moving on. Okay, this would be the last thing that I'm going to read to you guys. I'm not sure how much I'm going to get into it. I might have enough time to read the whole thing. We'll check it out. Transhumanism, Morgellons Disease, and the New World Order. I don't wish to share things you may already know, but I'm sure there are many out there who have not heard of Morgellons or of transhumanism or of how these were developed by mankind in order to, you can read that part, of the human race deliberately going against what God has created in his own image. It's what it's all about. Changing the image of God. Destroying God's work. What did, what did Lucifer tell God? Since God cannot be destroyed by Lucifer, the only way that he could hurt him, he said, then I will destroy man. And God basically said, go for it. My people have faith. And that pissed him off. Oh, yes, it did. What is shared here is quite unbelievable, yet it is what the New World Order has already developed and put into play against us. Because they have been and continued... Because they have been and continue to be deceived and manipulated by Satan. Satan hates all of mankind because God made us in his image. So he's doing all he can to convince us that evolution is correct in regards to our creation. And that also that we are flawed and accident and came from monkeys. Yet yeah, you're an accident on a speck of dust floating in infinite nothing. A lot of people think that. No wonder people are so depressed. They believe their existence is meaningless. Terrible. He has convinced people that we have monkey brains and not the mind of Christ, for those of us who are believers. It is horrendous what I am about to reveal, but you must be aware of what Satan's people are planning and already are doing against us. They not only want most of us dead or controlled, but they want to change us into different beings as well. Okay, more challenge. Basically, Morgellons disease is another form of genocide. Absolutely, genocide. You may recall from some other articles that the New World Order's intent kill off to populate the world by around 90%. We know that. So the surviving 10% will be more controllable. These survivors will be chipped, monitored, controlled. Oh, yes. Morgellons disease is not caused by our tainted food or water it is in fact being dropped in our heads through chemtrails chemtrail polymer contain horrific things that are meant to make us sick kill us off torture us and or alter you can read that apparently we are breathing in all sorts of nasty stuff ethylene dibromide nanoparticulates of aluminum and barium not to mention catatonic polymer fiber and some unidentified bioactive material and you can find all that on aircraft.org, which is a beautiful website. Very, very, very good website. Everybody should check that out. Lightwatcher.com reports that biological components have been reported in airborne samples that include modified molds, de desiccated red blood cells, and exotic strains of bacteria. Additionally, award-winning investigative reporter Will Thomas has reported findings of over 300 types of virally mutated fungi in the chemtrail fallout. The Idaho Observer has reported findings of 26 metals, including barium, aluminum, and uranium. A variety of infectious pathogens and chemicals and drugs, including two sedatives, in chemtrail fallout, six bacteria, including anthrax and pneumonia, nine chemicals, including acetyl... Wait, how do you say that? Acid... Acid... 
acetylcholine, acetylcholine chloride. 26 heavy metals including arsenic, gold, lead, mercury, silver, uranium, and zinc. 4 molds and fungi. 7 V's, 2 cancers, 2 V's cures. Dr. R. Michael Castle reports the finding of catatonic polymer fibers. Others have reported findings of tiny parasitic nematode eggs of some type encased in the fibers. And that comes from Amy Worthington, Global Research, EnergeticBalance.us, and Aircraft.org. Research has shown that chemtrail fibers contain bizarre fibers that are exact match to those found in people suffering from Morgellons disease. So what exactly is Morgellons disease? Well, you're not going to like it. It may even turn your stomach what I'm about to share. Symptoms include slow healing lesions, insects or worms, bacteria or plants growing in your skin. The lesions may be caused by microscopic arthropods too small to be seen by the naked eye. Origins of Morgellons. This gets good. Oh, I'm trying to light my cigarette, guys. I don't feel like pausing because I don't know if it'll mess my recording up. And we're doing good. We're doing good. We're almost at the end here. Basically, Morgellons is a disease intended to trigger genetic changes in the human body. I'll just say it. Through insect hormones, Morgellons infestations are caused by a certain type of fly, mainly Drosophilia. Nematodes, round worms, whip worms, parasitic wasps, moth, and spiders. This form of genetic therapy can induce disease or cure it. It's used as a weapon to affect permanent debilitating change in genetic makeup of the victim, although it may not always be lethal. Since it's raining down on our heads without our consent or knowledge, there is nothing we can do to stop it or really prevent ourselves from being affected by it. Talk about treason. And it's not just here. Talk about treason. Betrayed the entire world. Deceived the whole world. And that old serpent will be locked away for a thousand years. In vitro fertilization, gender selection, genetic manipulation, sexual abominations in order to create a different sort of human being. DNA. Oh, crap. I almost said it. When they say alien, they mean, like, not, like, space alien, but alien as in, like, alien to your body which includes the insect DNA mentioned earlier the creation of super powerful human hybrids dehumanization in public schools where evolution is being taught human cloning etc are all methods of terror not, not tr transforming human beings into creatures other than what God intended God does not make mistakes in his eyes mankind is fine the way it is but Satan, because of his warped thinking and evil nature, has manipulated and coerced people into not being happy with themselves. He has convinced certain people that these sorts of things, all this methodology and genetic engineering is good for us. He has convinced people into believing that they can improve on what God has made. He has convinced mankind that we can be gods, better, stronger, in fact, super beings. Yes, and that is the original lie. That was the first lie ever told in the garden by the serpent to Eve. You will be as God, knowing good from evil, but it was a lie. It was a total lie. But these scientists, geneticists, and rich people are being lied to, fooled, misguided by the enemy, who often transform himself into an angel of light in order to deceive us. So far, he seems to be doing a good job of it. As happened in the days of Noah, in Genesis chapter 6, fallen angels who had been cast out of heaven when Satan fell came to earth and mated with the women God created. It is then the Nephilim were created, the giants born of these women, men of great renown, who were considered super beings even then. But these sorts of things are an abomination in the eyes of God. He has not ordained any of this. In fact, he will soon return and prove himself to believers and unbelievers alike. He will crush Satan beneath his feet for these perversions and the evil he has done throughout the world. So I caution you, if you are intent in involving yourself in any of this abominable, sometimes disgusting stuff, then know that you are walking in direct violation of God's laws. Transhumanism is not of God, but of Satan. And this wicked manipulation of God's creation is being played out in laboratories all over the world.
and now Satan is trying to ram it down our throats as being normal and acceptable when it is not. He has perverted everything in order to get back to God and to drag as many human beings into hell with him as he possibly can before the Lord returns. That's the real agenda. Damn as many people to hell as possible. And trust me, the majority of people are going there. Whether they know it or not, it doesn't even matter if they believe it or not. That is where they are going. I share these things only to make you aware of what's happening in our world today. Overall, if you are a Jesus follower, then no, he would not want you to worry about any of these things. If we get sick and later perish, we will find ourselves in heaven anyway, where none of this evil will ever again touch us. For those who are not yet saved, I strongly urge you to ask Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. At least you will know you be in paradise if something untoward happens to you at some point. With Jesus Christ, there is nothing to fear. Just trust him for your future. He promises to see you through the storms. So fear not. This is his command to all believers. This is from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28, verse 22 to 24. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with fever, and with inflammation, and with extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And the heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under shall be iron. The Lord shall make rain of thy land powder and dust, from heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed." And basically, these are just videos and references of, and you can screenshot this if you want. This refers you to all the information that was uh, put up in the uh, article. I thought it was a very good article. Very good article. Truth. Real hardcore truth that I don't even think YT can take down. But I guess we'll see. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.